TCU. I assume that's just about everybody. Unless you're a Georgia fan. And this has nothing to do with uh, being anti-Georgia or anything like that. It's just more like, hey, man, TCU's playing for a national championship. That's pretty cool and insane and really good for college football. Like I discussed last week uh, in the solo version of the show, I said, uh, Tom, we got what we needed, man. We got college football was infused with new life this year, and it couldn't have come at a better time, man. I, I Right as the Knowles rise back to uh, relevance and, and hopefully and beyond, college football also expanded uh, its competitive balance, and it had been seriously lacking. But you're, you're beginning to see the wane of a uh, dominant run from Clemson. Uh, you you watched Alabama not be able to get stops and consistently struggle. Uh, still still a good year, obviously for them, but not by their standards. I suppose they were they were fallible. You saw the rise of Florida State. You saw LSU uh, become a much better team than we thought they were going to be. You saw a lot of surprises throughout the country. Like I thought, the Big Twelve was the most interesting conference in America this year. I bet if we had said going into the season that I think the Big 12 is going to be the most interesting conference week to week to watch and to follow, most people would have probably thought, no, nah, that, that's not accurate. That's not going to be true. It'll be the SEC again. It'll maybe be the Big 10. It won't be the Big 12. But I thought week in and week out, the Big 12 was the most interesting. And it was because, again, the competitive balance within that conference. K-State was good, obviously. And you had a good start to the season and a collapse by Oklahoma State. And then you saw this TCU team do what they did. And Obviously, there's always Texas and Oklahoma and those teams. So I thought it was fascinating, and um, there was some balance there with Utah and the Pac-12 and USC's return to form, and uh, Washington was good and had one of the most productive offenses in the country. Oregon's always interesting. There was a greater story to be told in college football this year than in seasons past, and we had something to do with that too. And tonight, I hope it's paid off by a TCU upset win, which would be, uh, I think, Certainly fodder for all of those who year in and year out don't think they have any chance in hell of being anywhere near that game. That's the thing is it makes it more tangible for us yeah. next year because I would argue that entering the season, and I'm sure Vegas would agree, if you look at last year's futures, that TCU was, was it 20 to 1? Yeah, something absurd. Something, yeah, something, yeah. yeah, We'll have better odds in the preseason next year than TCU had before this season. Started. Yeah, well, they came in unranked. Yeah. Exactly. About that, yeah. Yeah. Florida State will be preseason top 10, I think. Yeah. So if you were just thinking about, you know, as we were halfway through the season or maybe the 5-0 and start before we lose three in a row and you say, man, the playoff is, is possible. And then there was a rude awakening of the three losses in a row. You're still not that far off. And the difference is, and yeah. this, is the, this is the conversation we're going to have all offseason is, are we a, a national championship contender or a playoff contender? Two very different things. But TCU brought that closer, that margin closer together than I thought it ever could be because typically the playoff is littered with blowouts in the semis, and then you may get a good game in the final, you might not. <laughs> you can't say semis without everybody immediately going, I see you rolled your way into the semis. Every <laughs> Dios mio, man. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you say semis, not semis, if you say semis, everybody, I see you rolled your way into the semis is the first thing everybody thinks. <laughs> oh, that is good. That's what Michigan was saying to TCU, but then... Rude awakening. Yeah, Michigan, right? Now, well, Michigan almost had the ultimate nightmare happen, as we discussed. I mean, they almost, obviously, uh, they provided the shock of the college football playoff by losing to TCU and then had to sit and watch as Ohio State controlled most of the game against Georgia, thinking to myself, my God, if you're a Michigan fan, your worst nightmare is about to come true. You beat Ohio State at Ohio State with a freshman quarterback, and they're going to win the national championship. <laughs> That championship game would have been more entertaining. I don't care what happens tonight. This might be a classic. It might be an instant classic national championship game. But I was thinking the whole second half on New Year's Eve that, man, if Ohio State wins this, this is going to be bizarre. This title game is going to be the first of 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, it should be, I hope, an entertaining game. TCU has given us that all year long. They have provided a lot of entertaining games. I watched a lot of their games this year. Because early in the season, you could tell they were better than projected, and there was real talent on that team. And there is a toughness to them that is enjoyable as well that I think most people have embraced. Uh, they, they've had, I mentioned it before, uh, I think it's six of their games. It might be ten. i got to double-check this. 
decided by 10 points or fewer. I mean, all, all of their games seem to be games where they had to make comebacks or came down to the wire. I hope we get something along those lines. Now, since we last talked, I was off on Friday. Jared Verse, as hinted at numerous times on the Jeff Cameron Show, has returned, uh, and, and Florida State, obviously, the benefactor of that decision, one of many decisions that has gone in favor of Florida State. This is your daily reminder to appreciate the stage we're in. I'm fond of bringing up ever since I became a parent 15 years ago, which is also odd to me, uh, at least in terms of how fast time goes, that everything is a stage. I remind myself that you have to. It's a good way of going through the good times and the bad to remind yourself that everything's a stage. When it's a good time, you can appreciate it more when you pinch yourself and look around, take it all in, take a snapshot in your mind and remember it. When it's something bad, when it's something that sucks, when it's something that is awful, you have to remind yourself this too shall pass. It is just a stage moving forward. Well, this is a stage we should revel in. If you're a, if you're a diehard knoll and you've been waiting to matter over these last five years, and if you've been waiting to not only matter but have a chance to be really, really good again because nothing feels better than being in the hunt for the, for the grand prize, and Florida State finds themselves now a team that many will look at as an outside contender next year for the national title. I don't think they're the team. Georgia will be that. Alabama will be that, right? Those are the teams that they'll talk about, rightfully so. Ohio State will be that. They've been in it longer. They've recruited longer. They've had a better depth of player for a longer period of time and a greater level of consistency, more importantly. But Florida State will be looked upon as a team that is right there knocking on the door about to say, hey, look at us. And that's a cool feeling. But remind yourself that this climb, as it's been dubbed by Mike Norvell, uh, has been an, an awful lot of fun and a, and a great ride to be on, but is also a stage because at some point you arrive. And when you arrive, it is a different feeling. When you're fending everybody off as you try to get to the top, it is a very different feeling than when you are hunting. When you are the one who is seeking to shock and to surprise and to overcome. And you don't often have a season like the one Florida State just had, followed up by the sort of kumbaya we saw with roster retention. And I can tell you, and we've been keeping you abreast all along on the show, of a lot of the efforts and behind the scenes uh, push to, to, get kids to to consider coming back, you understand that it's not just that they love it here, and they do, and not just that they believe in the coach and his messaging and the coaching staff, they do, and not just that they've had success on the field uh, in the midst of this climb, which they have now this year provided that. But it's also that you have real money exchanging hands and ensuring that players are suitably motivated to consider coming back, not only motivated to come back to Florida State, but maybe not go to another institution, other universities. And I don't know what's going to become of this system that we currently have in college football because it doesn't seem, to me, sustainable. But as we've watched the postseason take place, we've watched Florida State win the vast majority of the battles to keep kids on the roster or away from other rosters. I don't know moving forward if it's always going to go this way, so appreciate the stage that we're in because I can assure you there have been weighty efforts, some by our arch rivals, to try to dismantle this roster, and they have failed around every turn. Stick them in your mouth and suck them. Indeed. Indeed. And there have been rumors of absurd dollar figures for nominal players vital to our success and depth perhaps some of the players are pivotal in Florida State's future successes some are just depth players guys that you know allow you to rotate a quality player in while you rest your starter not even a dominant player and Others have efforted to bring them in to dismantle the roster. I don't care if it's an effort from a rival 
towards our players or if it's us towards other programs and their players, they're going to have to wrangle this, man. You cannot have a situation in which it's Boardwalk Empire and we've all drawn on each other at the gas station. You know, here we are. I'm trying to transport booze. You're trying to transport booze. And here we are pointing guns and my 10 guys and your 10 guys. We've all got a gun pointed at each other. This has got to stop, man. <laughs> Nobody can do business this way. We're all going to be dry. It's terrible. The booze has got to get to where it's going. Stop shooting my people. And I'll stop shooting your people. You just got to find that one guy, the college football commissioner. This would be, <laughs> I want to control it. Yeah. <laughs> As a business. <laughs> We, we got to all agree here today at this table. <laughs> yes. Which I'm glad that you are now sitting here. Yeah. Forthwith. But we want to control it as a business. I mean, they got to, we got to get a handle on this. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Uh, but it worked now. So wrap yourself in the joys of success one more time because Florida State has successfully, it would appear and continues to appear, uh, fend, had been able to fend off. It's chief rivals. Repeat it. Your mouth and suck them. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, right. that's right, Mike. That's right. Whew. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, we're we're in we're in good shape. Uh, you know, it's 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 been. Uh, you know, kids are gonna they're gonna look around, and I don't blame the kids. Uh, if you get a phone call at your job, or somebody reaches out to you through a third party or something, and says, "Hey, uh, you like your job? Yeah, yeah, I like my job." Would you like to work here for triple what you're making there? I'm interested. You have my attention. Let's have this conversation. I mean, you're going to have the conversation. All of us would. It does create a resentment when you learn of these conversations and you find out who is having them and you think, well, man, there's no loyalty at all. <laughs> but it's also completely understandable. Z Chan, what's up, baby? Howdy, gents. Happy Monday. I love the song that was played around the More Athletic Center this weekend. It was sweet to my ears. Also, your monthly reminder, 45 to 3. Love y'all. Woo! Thank you, brother. Yeah, it was a good weekend, and it was uh it's 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 fun to see where uh Florida State has uh kind of built momentum on the heels of a great season and they've been able to keep it up and soon enough, we'll be able to put our guard down, be able to relax a little bit. Tom and I were talking about that early this morning. You just want to, I mean, the transfer portal stuff and the NIL stuff is fun. It's great to cover. It's wonderful content. Is it? Well, it's fodder. It's certainly fodder. I mean, oh, you it's do great have to content. do it. Mm -hmm. Is it fun to cover? I don't know. This cycle is very unique for Florida state. Yeah. Though, yeah. Because of the retention thing being novel, the battles end being brand new. And then also they're in a position where a lot of veterans were in between. I don't know that every off season is going to have quite the collection of different things happening at once. Like this one did. This was a very special off season. I think from now on that import export market is going to be a little bit more fixed and you kind of know where you're going. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think all of this is going to change and we'll, we're in for that. Uh, but for now we've navigated these waters well, and we're going to be come out the other side and be in a real good position. And, um, Here's hoping they figure something out with college football. I love the sport, and they had competitive balance this year more than most uh, this years, and, and, and it you know certainly seemed to bounce back from the previous season. Yeah, the thing that's going to be interesting in the next two to three seasons is when COVID eligibility wanes, what happens to the competitive balance? Does it return to its former state in which it's the Joneses, the two or three schools, or are there more upsets still because of the portal? Like I'm wondering... What is more responsible for the parity? Is it COVID eligibility because you got a lot of dudes, oh, 22, 23-year-olds? Yeah, yeah, 23-year-old like, dudes like out there. Like the NCAA there. tournament, you've got, you know, one and dones against, you know, a mm -hmm. fifth-year point guard and three other guys that have been in the program for three-plus years. That's always an interesting bet to make in March Madness. Is that happening? And is that why there's parity? Or is it because the transfer portal is spreading out? Probably a combination of both, Tom. Probably a combination of both. I, I do think we're going to see. We did have the, the larger discussion about what NIL could do. And it, it can be uh, a bit of an equalizer in that everybody is allowed to seriously go after somebody. I mean, like if you're Kansas State, you may not have the money that Alabama has or, or even the want that Alabama has to be great. But you do care and you're on the heels of a good season. And let's say you identify a kid. He's a local kid and he's being recruited by USC and Texas and 
Michigan and a couple other schools. And you're like, yeah, you know, you should come to Kansas State. You're one of ours. You're one of our guys. And uh, we've got a little bit of what for to offer you to make sure that that happens. You can win that guy. You can win that guy. They wouldn't have won that guy with just a scholarship offer in the past. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And I, yeah. the hard part is until the system changes or has a cap on it, everybody's going to take a turn being desperate. And so every year, like Auburn for this year's was a great example. Signing day, we lost a kid. Maybe they were desperate to make Whoa. sure that they landed some yeah. high-impact transfers and or high school players. Uh, we saw Texas A&M. They were the first ones to throw their hat in the ring, and then all those kids left. I think they have 26, 27 departures in the borderless yeah. offseason. Yeah. Yeah. Miami, it feels like, will be desperate every offseason. But there are going to be different programs that take turns resetting the market because they are just so starving to win. And how do you navigate that? Because it, it'll pop up at different parts of this southeastern region of the country, I would think, in the next two or three off seasons. I didn't mention it, but we should note uh, Coach Hamilton gets his 600th win over the weekend against Georgia Tech. In truth, it's 622, and we should acknowledge that it's 622 because the NCAA is stupid. Uh, but, but okay, officially it's 600, and they had the montage for him. Uh, Leonard Hamilton, a class act and an all-time great coach in Florida State history all-time winningest coach in Florida State history and uh, a guy that um, a, a guy that deserves the honor. And it's good to see that the competitive, speaking of competitive balance, they're, they're back to being competitive. Uh, as guys got healthier and they kind of figured out a little bit of who they are, they're playing better. They're not a good team. Uh, and they're not, in all likelihood, without a special kind of run, going to make the tournament. Uh, but they are now a threat to those that are. They are not a team people are going to want to play. I have a suspicion down the stretch as they get Baba back. They also have put themselves in a position to perhaps make a run. One magical week in Greensboro, North Carolina. Perhaps or moreover, the Platinum Bohica is in play. Oh, yeah. The Platinum Bohica, I thought, was a lost cause. And when I answered those questions about whether or not it was obtainable, I thought undoubtedly we were doomed. Zero chance to beat Miami in basketball. But now I say, oh, no, nay, nay. We do indeed have a shot to achieve the platinum Bohica. I think what we need to do for that day of the game is carve out a space either in the parking lot outside of the TLC double C or to, to present a college town, wherever. Well, present. well, we could just have everybody who wants to be there for that specific event and call it Bohicaville. We can have Bohicaville that day. It would have to be a post-game celebration. I don't, but it's still, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. you got to believe before the tip off. You got to believe you got to buy. But we in. will not reveal the platinum. Bohemian. No, no, not before the game. But after the game, perhaps we could hold off since I don't feel like getting arrested and walking over to the Miami bench and handing them the platinum Bohemian. Wait a minute. You award it to. Oh, I'd never noticed that. Yeah, they get the they get it. They get it. It's all the more offensive that they get to take that with them. Oh, that's you true. take that with you. Why don't you just take that with you? Considering the nature of the trophy, that yes, does make more sense. it's the sense. Platinum Bohica. Not something you want to receive. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Howdy there, folks. Jeff Cameron here inviting you to join me from 1 to 3 each and every weekday afternoon. We're live and local thanks to great sponsors like FSUHomeLoans.com. 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, FSUHomeLoans.com. Barry knows cool, he's keeping you comfortable. Barry knows cool, you can put him to the test. This is Tyler from Bear No Heating and Air. Now you can schedule an appointment or pay your bill from your mobile device any day, anytime, anywhere. Save big time in the new year and get $1,200 off select new units. Online at BearNoAC.com. Auto license CAC 1816-186. For many in the workforce, their goal is to climb the company ladder. Often the climb requires a move to another city, and that's especially true in our industry. I'm Jay of Paul's Termite and Pest Control. If you rise the ranks of our competitors, there's a good chance moving up means moving away. Why? Because they're not local companies. They're from places like Orlando, Atlanta, Salt Lake City, and even Europe. That's certainly not the case with our employees. We're a company that was founded in the Big Bend and remains locally owned. When Paul's Termite and Pest Control employees advance, they remain in the Tallahassee area. Don't trust the safety of your family and pets from disease-carrying pests or the structure of your biggest investment from termites to people who may be here today and gone tomorrow. Trust Paul's Termite and Pest Control, a company that has serviced thousands of our neighbors right 
right here for over 50 years. Being local really does matter in our industry because local problems require local solutions. Paul's Termite and Pest Control are the Big Ben's local experts for the elimination of termites or any other pest and a greener lawn too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn. And Dr. Shannon Lord. We are the dynamic duo at Finn Chiropractic, where we seek to get to the cause of your problem. Whether you have neck pain, back pain, headaches, or any joint stiffness, we've developed the Phenomenal Health Exam with some high-tech ways to get to the cause. Our Phenomenal Health Exam will give the answers you need. Get in for the Phenomenal Health Evaluation. Visit our website at finchiro.com, F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. Because your chiropractor loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. Car accident? Call 777-7777 for Basic Brooks. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Jerry's Famous Cigar Shop is a special place. It's Tallahassee's only traditional gentleman's cigar lounge with a massive collection of hard-to-find boutique cigar brands, a staff with over 100 years of combined cigar knowledge and experience, the best prices in town with full-box discounts. A great selection of beer and wine, indoor and outdoor seating, private lockers, and best of all, Jerry's is a local family-owned business. Visit us on Shero Road or the new lounge on Cary Forest Parkway, the only cigar lounge for the true gentleman. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange Theory Fitness Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Can't budget include a special a special purchase at X Mark. <clears throat> I can build Gene for it. You're like, what in the hell? I mean, some kind of expense report. Dropping this off here, Gene. Uh, one last question. Has to do with the show. Well, you can you can place that in a line item document with like gas, 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 lunch. X Mark, gas, gas, gas. And then see. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have plenty of uh, expense reports to send in. We've been traveling just as And we'll be right back in Orlando, my new favorite town, uh, in uh, September. Man, I can't wait for that game. This is going to be the hard part. This is the difficulty of rising back to prominence is that there are real expectations. And I'm giddy like a kid at Christmas, opening presents. I want to know, what are we? Are we championship level good? Are we just good? We're still a year away from championship level good and just good. Good's okay. Good's the present you asked for, but it wasn't the present you wanted. Oh, I did want that sweatshirt. You're right. I thought this was the trip to Italy at first. This is interesting, though, because um, this upcoming season would be the time to book the flight for the trip to Italy. I don't know that the year after that, with all you'll need to replace... You'll be equipped to get on a plane to go to Italy. Like you could probably get to <laughs> you London. Gotta use this year's bonus for the trip to Italy now. Maybe Portugal, but it, I mean those last mm-hmm. few miles, few hundred miles, they matter. They matter. It's a big difference. 
this might be the year where you got to get with the getting. Well, I, I <laughs> also Alabama, Georgia, among others, breaking in brand new quarterbacks next year. So this is a good opportunity here, a little window. Well, I have a suspicion that the the quarterback that Georgia breaks in next year will be better than their current starting quarterback who's on the cusp of winning back-to-back national championships. So it's a little different story with them. Let's hope he uh, plays like the 5'10 buck 80 kid he is or whatever tonight and uh, and struggles. But he won't because he's tough. I got to give him all the credit he's in the world. Tough. He's a tough. He will not guy. tip you, no, he's, but he's he, tough. He's tough. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I go back and forth on what I think is going to happen tonight. The NFL was replete with really cool moments this weekend. Did you catch any of that? I know you were busy. Your wife was busy running, uh, in the dopey over there in Orlando doing superhuman things and a tip of the cap to her. So what's it? A 5k, a 10k and a marathon half and a full. Back to back to back. So it ends up being 48.6 it's miles. the most ridiculous thing of all time. And, and that's the official count. You also do a lot of walking in between. Yeah. Oh, congratulations to her. I want to say that publicly. Jamie is a badass. I could, I don't, I mean, as I currently sit here now, I know I couldn't do it, but I wouldn't, I just, I wear the inner strength. It's not the physical part of that. It's the mental part of that, that I admire greatly. So the good news yesterday from an NFL standpoint, um, and she enjoyed it with me, pull, pull it up on the phone every once in a while, is we were able to watch the kickoffs of the one o'clock, yeah. which included the Buffalo kickoff, and that game was in Orlando. It was televised. Did you, I mean, come on. You got to be kidding me. That was dude. insane. And between that and the Indianapolis player who was his teammate in high school setting the ball down at the three, go, I mean. Oh, yeah. No, no, there was, was a uh, lot. There was a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah, man. That uh, was amazing. The good news was that Minnesota had like a five way scenario to get to the two seed. Wasn't going to happen. Right. And then the Bucks were locked. Yeah. So, so they didn't there care. Was they not saw everybody much in the stress half, yeah. between our household as we were meandering around Epcot getting very many beverages. There was not a whole lot of stress there. We did get back in time to see, and she went to bed. Oh, well deserved. Uh, I watched the third and fourth quarter of Green Bay and Detroit. Which Bravo, awesome. Detroit. Bravo. Dan yes. Campbell. Go. Uh, Detroit's like the most likable team in the league. They I wanted be Detroit. I want a Detroit jersey. I almost want to give them our – take our spot. Take, we suck. Keep you playing. would kill us. You would kill us, Detroit. You should go. Yeah, I, I was so impressed with that. And it's just so good because Rodgers had been such a – for three weeks now, I talking agree. about it constantly. A little bit. A little, little bit. bit, and then had to deal with that and that sour puss look on his face, losing, walking off. A, he's forever walking off a Lambeau field, losing in the biggest moments forever with some paltry, sorry amount of offense, too, like last year in the playoffs against the 49ers. And now this, it was glorious. Did you see the Jamal Williams interview afterwards? I did, yeah. Man. And the way he played the game, like it was, it the, was fantastic. Everything culminated with that interview, but you could see it the way he was playing. He should have been flagged for taunting on his touchdown. Where uh, I was like, "Ooh, a little." I loved crust. it. I right. loved it. <laughs> loved it. That's such a likable team. It really is. Yeah, they call a hook and ladder. <laughs> I mean, they didn't get the first down on that play, yeah. but they might as well have. No, I, I I loved everything about it. There was a lot of cool stuff in the NFL yesterday. We had the Jamal Williams interview afterwards where he's crying about his granddad. He goes from crying about his granddad to suck it mode quickly. He He's in the middle of tears, and he's like, don't let these tears fool you now. And turns right around and stop playing us, man. <laughs> Which was cool. The George Kittle thing was awesome with his 100-year-old grandma that he flies from the Iowa farm. She'd never seen him play. I have no idea about this. He has a 100-year-old grandma. She just turned 100 on January the 6th. So he flew her from her farm that she's lived on for eight decades to the game to watch him play. She's never seen him play. The entire stadium, when she got to her seat, sang her happy birthday. Sir. Watch that alone. It's unreal. Could she appreciate it? Yes. Oh, a okay. word solid as a rock. That's important. Oh, buddy. because um, Detroit <laughs> did that for Gordy Howe yeah. once upon a time, 
and it did not go well. Well, it's like when they rolled Steinbrenner out there at the All Star game. Yeah. He's drooling on himself and weeping. He's scared of the cold weather. You laugh to keep from crying in a bad way because <laughs> there's fear in Gordy Howe's eyes. He's, he's like, like they're what is kill this? me? Why are they chanting? So I'm glad that she could appreciate. Oh, she smiled ear to ear, birthday. and she was there. She's had ten daughters. Oh my! They were with her. They were all like every. And Kittle came running over in uniform. It was awesome. He scored two touchdowns. Her husband didn't make it to a hundred, did he? <laughs> he wasn't there, Tom. He wasn't there. Ten daughters. My, my God. God is right. But so you had that situation, which was really cool. What a phone bill! You got to give. Well, they're on a farm in the middle of Iowa. They're not calling anybody. They even have phone. They have a phone in Iowa. I'm I'm kidding. One of my best friends is from Iowa. Hey hey hey. So I also think it's worth noting that the Steelers have had, and I don't care about the Steelers, but the Steelers have had 16 straight non-losing seasons. They were 2-6 and six to start this year. And Mike Tomlin said, screw it, we're going with the Rook. And they finish 9-8. and eight. Dude, that guy can coach his ass off. There is just no getting around that. That is incredible. Think about how sorry the Steelers looked every time you watched them. Even in the midst of this winning streak, you couldn't take them serious. I didn't realize how intense he was. Did you see the He's viral awesome. video of the guy in the tunnel? He's yeah. like, good luck, Coach Tomlin. <laughs> I'm effing working Yeah, here. man, I'm effing working. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy was great about it. That yeah, he was, he was cool. like, that was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People were like outraged. He's like, no, no, no it was awesome. was great. I love it. That's why he didn't lose. <laughs> My man's locked in. I loved it. I loved it. There were so many really cool moments. That game last night, the Buffalo thing was unreal. That gave me the chills. I'm not easily moved like that. A lot of that stuff is manufactured, but when he took it to the house, I went, oh. <gasps> Oh, my God, this is amazing. You know who didn't get the moment, though? It was Tony. Tony didn't, you know. I was like, oh, well, this is perfect. It's like, Tony, you let it breathe, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Come you on, know, Tony. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun with, um, I'm going to tell you, I, I think at least four of the games yesterday had these moments where you're like, well, this is awesome. I thought, because the last weekend of the NFL is usually kind of, a lot of teams resting their starters, yeah, yeah. games that don't really matter. Well, the Chargers certainly didn't. <laughs> that guy's going to get fired. Man. What is with him? Speaking of getting fired, that's what happened to Cliff Kingsbury. And who mm. didn't see that coming? So They Cliff pulled a Glazer family because Gruden was extended uh, over a decade ago, and they fired him the year he was extended. That's exactly what happened to Cliff. Yeah, well, it's a kiss my ass on Main Street moment for him and Lovey Smith. Also, if you hire Lovey Smith to be your head coach, you should know you're going to have to fire him in an hour. Stop that. Secondly, the Texans have now done that year over year. One year, grand opening, grand closing. Get the hell up out of here. I want to be the Texans' next coach. I can win two or three games. Just roll it out there. Like, roll it out there, Roy. We'll win a couple. And then fire me and watch me take it to Tahiti. That's the end of that, man. I mean, goodness gracious, what a cool gig to be the Texans' coach where they have very high standards and no chance to reach them. Jeff Cameron Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. Your local news now. 22-year-old Edward Cessna has been arrested in connection to a recent Thomas County murder. The charges stem from a shooting at a home on Five Forks Road in the town of Boston on Thursday morning. Deputies with the Thomas County Sheriff's Office, deputies and officers from the Boston Police Department responded around 1020. When they arrived, a man identified as Isaac Miranda was found shot in the upper torso. Officers provided CPR and Miranda until paramedics with emergency medical services arrived. He was then taken to Archibald Memorial Hospital where he passed away. The city of Tallahassee has asked a judge to dismiss a federal lawsuit filed by former Citizens Police Review Board member Taylor Byro. Byro filed the lawsuit last month claiming her free speech rights were violated when city commissioners voted to remove her from the board at its December 7th meeting. The controversy surrounds a mug that Byro brought to a board meeting, which court records say featured the message, abolish police. This is Rachel Lene with your World Talk 93.3 local news update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tell us to go to Mac Store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Highs level off around 68 this afternoon. Under sunny skies, northerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows around 41 tonight, partly cloudy. High temperatures reach up to 68 tomorrow, mainly sunny. Highs level off around 72 Wednesday under mainly sunny skies. 75 Thursday, chance for scattered storms. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 65. 
everybody, the perfect fireplace makes your house a home. How's your fireplace looking? Not too well? Hearth and Patio can help you with that. Actually, Hearth and Patio can help you with anything fire. Give my friends a call at Hearth and Patio. If you need new fireplace, fireplace upgrade, fireplace repair, you need custom outdoor kitchen, grills, or an amazing fireplace for your backyard. 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. Or you can visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth Patio Tallahassee. They keep the home fires burning. Hey, what's happening, Jeff? It is always good to see you, Eddie. Had a long day, my man. I was thinking about it. Gordo's was the place to uh, ease the pain, you know? You're frustrated with your job. You're aggravated. Life's beating you down. Maybe your wife's speaking. <laughs> you gotta get yeah. out the door. You know what? Here at Gordo's, man, we welcome everybody. Disgruntled wives, disgruntled husbands, kids running away from home. We'll even give that kid a job. Send them our way. Go make some money and eat delicious food at Gordo's. It's perfect. And have a damn good time doing it. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Matt. Yes, Greg? Do you know all the different ways that you can listen to Real Talk 93.3? There are several. So we've got realtalk93.com. You can go back and listen to all of our shows in the podcast section. That's right. You can also listen on our app as well. Search Real Talk 93.3 and look for the red microphone mm -hmm. and download our app. Never go anywhere without us. And of course, you can always listen right on the radio. Well, they are listening. Are they? If they're hearing this commercial, then they're listening. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. We've got a couple to get through that I mentioned or didn't mention. Whoa. Excuse me, uh, Marcus. I will be a huge Bucks fan this week for sure. Got a hat, everything. Three one three Detroit on the map. Go birds to the one seed. Happy Monday, fellas. Whoa. My man, right? Happy New Year, Jim. Catching up on the pod on one and a half speed. So you guys sound like something from Palula. Normal. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you with the Ghost Frog uh, tonight. How about the sensible, sensible kickoff time of tonight's Natty? I thought maybe the website had failed and it was showing me sensible time. When I, saw I thought it was showing you like West Coast time or yeah. something. I mean, like I was like, with the World Cup. Yeah, it's kicking off yeah. 11 in the morning. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. No, it's not. no 730. Thanks, man. I'm old. We can't be out here kicking games off at 9 o'clock. What are we doing? If it's the same broadcast structure as the Mega Pass or the semifinal, it's the same. The ESPN News is the channel that has the wire cast with only the stadium sounds and PA now. Oh, beautiful. I mean, it's just watch the game. Yeah, you don't have to listen to nonsense. But 7.30, I'll make the whole thing. I'll see you all. A lot of times, uh, I got to do the, well, I got a business break here. How do you feel about the 13? TCU plus the 13. I haven't felt a particular way okay. at all. I, uh, I, haven't, I haven't been moved. You haven't at one point, but that's a lot of it. Well, I feel like player for player, George is better across the board, and I can see why that number is what it is. There's a toughness to that TCU team, and they get down a lot, and they always come back. They make it a game when that happens. And so I just mean, I am fairly indifferent. I am leaning towards the underdog. The underdog a lot of times, I don't have preference on the score for the underdog. I think it's good for how football is to win. I do. But Georgia just won last year. I don't need to see anybody unless it's Florida State win back to back games. Nobody needs to be winning back to back championships unless it's us winning back to back to back to back to back to like that. And the whole country and the world can hate us. I'd be like, fuck, that's great. Love but other than that, I don't want to see anybody win back to back championships. So, so just, I think the working theory for Georgia is trying to tell a story of why they would blow this team out. Not only do they have better players, they have better players. They play with that but, well, they, I mean, they do against most other teams. Yes, they, they, do. they laid some eggs. 
They did. Where they well, still escaped. They got this dude was the you know yeah. the big one. And then if you you're correct, I don't look at gang control anymore in the college football playoff. But if you're talking about oh, who, yeah. who had the flow in hockey, who carried the act? Yeah. Ohio State was setting the tone. For oh, the Ohio State won three quarters of that game. Correct. So that is the lesson learned, and they won't make that mistake again against an inferior team to Ohio State. There's talent on the offensive side of the ball. I it's also thought they, yeah, and I also thought they fought Ohio State in a bad way. What I mean by that is Ohio State had been told the week leading up to that, you suck, you're a bum line, day. you just got housed at home by Michigan again. This is ridiculous. You know, you don't deserve to be. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it was partially history. It was partially the history of it, which is the average margin of victory for a semifinal game was around 20 points. It was like, who is going to get blown out this, you know, on this semifinal Saturday? Who's going to get blown out today? And the candidate was Ohio State. That was the most obvious candidate. They've been blown out before. Well, the it ended up, are we having a weird internet issue here? I don't know. There's still going to happen. I'm going to poke the time in and say this is uh, not working. We'll have to double check what's happening. Audio, so good. You guys, let us know when it's fixed. Let us know if things are working out. I think the radio audience is fine, but the interwebs are uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the deal is there. But, uh, don't you worry, though. If the issues persist, the uh, previous podcast is available. That is and true. all of your podcasts and it will be provided. I want to go back for a second. Uh, Jared Burst deciding to come back. Yes, he had to have, I mean, my mind, had to have been offered, obviously, a, a qualified incentive. But also, I wonder what he heard from the league. I want to know what he heard from the league. Uh, I don't know. I, I would love to have that conversation. I don't know that I'm going to be, uh, maybe I will. I mean, he's a straight shooter. I interviewed him to start the season. You recall that. And I love that he was so forthright and candid in that interview about what he expected to do, what he hoped to do, what he thought we should know about him. So maybe I'll get another chance this year to talk to him before the season and ask him just kind of what he, what all he weighed and how serious it got in terms of NFL offers and and in terms of uh, projections, excuse me, not NFL offers. I, I'm talking about offers here from, the battle's end and then thinking about yeah. what where he was projected because that's just, a it's an interesting it's, it's not a surprise we've been talk, hinting at it for weeks but it's an interesting decision i just wonder how specific they get these days with your draft grade quote unquote i remember ernie sims working with him and he said it was simply a phone call you get a phone call here's what it is click you know that there's no nuance to it it's just you don't know who did it you just know this is mm. what the grade is i wonder if they speak to jared from whatever NFL grading system that they come from, and they say, we think you're going to land here, but here's the range. Like, do, you, they, do they give you a range and a floor? Because there's so many high-profile examples, Aaron Rodgers being one of them, of a dude sitting in the green room expecting to go top 10, and then they're just there for yeah. hours and hours and hours. So I wonder if they prep kids that might be a first-round grade, borderline, but you could fall to the third. Like, Do they say those words, and does that have an impact on the process? Well, hearing something uh, as far-reaching as, you know, there are some teams interested in you. We, we've deduced uh, late first, but uh, it's more likely that you're going to go mid-second or could go early third. I mean, that's such a wide array of opinions. I mean, th that's and paydays. A, oh, well, I was going to say, that's a very different-looking paycheck. So, I don't know, man. I, that would be a really difficult ask. If, if you end up hearing, hey, could be first round, well, okay. I really want to go back and play college football if I might be a first round pick. But how seriously are you are you taking that evaluation and and do they give you percentages and odds and everything else? Like it's more likely that you're gonna go early third. Well, then hell yeah, I'm coming back probably. It's it's, it's interesting. By the way, I didn't mention it. The uh, kicker from ETSU, baby. We got us the transfer kicker from Johnson City, Tennessee. I'll have to sit down with him before the start of the season and compare notes of how much things have changed uh, many moons ago that I was in Johnson. You've got a lot of work to do. I do. Because there's Fentrell Cypress, Deuce Cypress, who's Rock Hill, South Carolina. So uh, have a conversation about my favorite city in South Carolina. You're going to be like our guy from Virginia Tech just going down the line. Hey. hey, 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 my guy. What was it like living in the only decent city in South Carolina? Surrounded by all those sorry roads. And people afraid of muslims what was the average radius of your travel outside of rock hill yeah 
Oh, I'm not counting the beach. And, not, and we're not counting North Carolina yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, basically yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. south and to the west, how <laughs> far would you go? So there's that. And then I could, uh, I obviously will sit down and compare notes about Johnson City. Uh, that's, this young man got to play outdoors. I was at the mini dome. And artificial turf as hard as a rock. He got to play outside. Was that like what Idaho's dome looked like? Tiny. It was the mini dome. It was, it was nicer yeah. than Idaho's dome. They also played basketball games there, and it was an awesome place to see basketball. They used to have to draw the curtains in, like where they cut off part of the. So they made it really, yeah, more yeah. of a. Iona had that too. More of an intimate atmosphere, and you know, in those days, I'm sure, Patino's expanded it since then. They had, they had, I mean, they had a squad when I was there, and uh, you know, that's that's the Calvin Talford, Mr. Jennings team that I've brought up before that provided a lot of upsets in the NCAA tournament. They were a fun team to watch. Uh, they could, they played with everybody. I remember that. And has your fun. brain flipped to that yet? Does it do so after tonight's championship game? Because Basketball? You're, you're talking about March Madness and upsets, and, and I'm thinking, my God, that just feels so foreign, knowing that Florida State and realizing mm. with great vigor that Florida State is over 500 in ACC play. That's great. Like They are a different team than they were yeah. three weeks ago. There's no question. It's still this They're is, not great, but they're, they're, they're much better version. This is the sport. We all have one. This is the sport where if my team isn't legit, like really good or in the mix, it's tough to watch other games. I will always watch Florida State basketball, but it's tough to watch other games when Florida State is having a rough season. So I want to bring this up. Georgia Tech comes into the TLC Double C on Saturday. They had a three-game win streak against us. We snap it, win the game. Um, play. They just beat Miami at home yeah, earlier in yeah. the week. Uh, they're a one and four away from home and they really struggle when they're not in their own backyard. So that that's Florida State put it on them, and that's all great. And we can get into the numbers, and I do that usually after every game. And I haven't done it as much this year because it just felt like it was a, we were on a road to nowhere, which is really frustrating and disappointing because I think a lot of that could have been avoided if the bogus NCAA suspension of Bob Miller hadn't happened, which we all know about because I think he's going to be their best player or certainly one of in the conversation. Matthew Cleveland's bounced back nicely. Kudos to that young man who started this year as dreadfully as you possibly could. I got to believe he was hurt, like everybody else on the team. But here's what I would say. College basketball sucks. It is a dreadful product. It is borderline unwatchable. RS is in the jackpot now, okay? And I don't know if it's the bitterness that's left over from the way this season started for us in, in Florida, at Florida state, the last time you had this take, we were in that dearth of no, I, no, but it, they also, okay. the, the sport as a whole, if you recall, went through that season where nobody could make a shot. Remember that every time you tuned into the games, it was like watching women's basketball. It was dreadful. Nobody could shoot. You're like, this is Jesus. What are we doing here? Guys, wide open, 15 footers. Clang. It was awful. Poor decisions, turnovers, Pace, everything sucked. Brick fest. It was a brick festival, and it is again. I try to watch these games. I don't know if it's just because the NBA is so good right now. The depth of talent in the NBA is so good right now. That's a problem you have, too, when you watch the pros left and right making shots. Well, yeah. watching the – yes, but there are so many stars in the league right now. I mean, it, you could – any given night, you just flip around to a game, you're like, Beast, superstar, awesome. There are so many. I mean, it's true. Is that so? Yeah, oh, yeah. The league is littered with talent right now. They've never. It's unbelievable. But that's, that's a side note. College is never, you know, we never compared their shooting ability to the NBA shooting ability. We know those guys are the creme de la creme of the people who play basketball in the world. They're all there, right? We got it. So it's unfair to look at some sophomore in college and try to compare him to you know, Devin Booker. You're not going to do that. You're not going to, you know, all right, I got it. But when I watch games now, I, I there was a game on the other day. I flipped. I can't, who was it? See, very forgettable. Anyhow, I was flipping around watching two different college basketball games. I, for some reason, I think Tulsa was on. I watched for five minutes and nobody scored. Nobody scored. I might as well have been watching soccer. Nobody scored. And I like soccer. That, I was sitting there watching that going, there have been nine straight empty possessions. Nine straight empty possessions between these two teams. What kind of nonsense is this? Nope, oh, we got a whistle underneath. That's a three-second violation. All right, another turnover. 
for Tulsa. Four out of five possessions. It's. I think a lot of people, I will say this, if people do not share, and that's all right, you don't have to share my opinion about college basketball. A lot of people love college basketball. I used to love college basketball and have kind of spent the last 10 years kind of, it's a it's a wave. It's sometimes like, oh, we're on the crest. This is good. Yes, it's a year-by-year year product. It really is. Yes. It really is. And so I, I noticed some years, I'm like, oh, okay, good. We're, we're having a good year. All right, there's some balance here. This, we're having a good year. Other years, I'm like, man, this is a chore. This is awful. I can't watch this. These two teams can't shoot. And then they had the year, you recall, where Billis was talking about it every day, that there were points of emphasis that they gave their officials, and the game was unwatchable because there was never a yeah, flow yeah. to the game. There was never a flow to the game. Actually, one of the good years in the last 10 was the year that Miami was really good. That season was was an excellent one. We weren't good that season, but I remember that because I was thinking, man, they're a part of this. They're a part of the fun. I want to be a part of the fun. Yeah, and then yeah. we were again, but I digress. Well, it's it's upsetting to me because I want to love college basketball. It serves you well to love college basketball because when football ends, you're starving and you're ready to go. And obviously the NFL and the playoffs and everything's still coming up. I don't want to say that it's all over now, but I, it just it doesn't feel like that's going to be a comfortable fallback. Hour number two, fourth coming. Stay with. Tune in every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. for Great Southern Gospel with Bobby and Nita Key, sharing their voices for nearly 20 years, only on Real Talk 93.3. There's nothing like relaxing in a hot tub after a long day. But if you don't have one, you're truly missing out. Hot tubs and spas have tremendous health benefits, besides just helping you relax. Like improving your sleep, they help with pain relief. They help to better your cardiovascular health and so much more. And this season is the perfect season to finally buy what you've been wishing for. Pinch a penny pool, patio, and spas has the hot tubs you need for the price you want. Come up our huge 12,000 square foot showroom and save today. There's over 50 hot tubs in stock right now. So you won't have to wait weeks on end for that delivery to finally come to town. If you're ready to relax, we're here to show you how. Pinch a penny pool, patios, and spas. Come visit our used showroom at 2473 Greer Road with over 50 hot tubs to choose from. You'll be glad you did. Hey, this is Greg Tish. Here's something you might know about me. I, I don't drink coffee. I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Well, that is until now. So why change now? Well, it's because my dear friend at Grassroots Coffee reached out to me after hearing me say that and insisted that I give his product a try. I've been making a huge mistake. The world of coffee is fascinating. I always thought coffee is coffee, you know? It, it, well, it, no, it's not. I have tried their coffee and it is fantastic. Now, I've got a fascination with learning more about the best coffee in our area. Grassroots Coffee is locally roasted, locally owned, and locally loved. You can find Whole Bean Grassroots Coffee on the local aisle at Publix, also in Whole Foods. But the best way to get this black gold is to order it online. They literally grind the fresh roasted beans to your preferred level, bag it, write the date on it by hand so you know the exact day your coffee was roasted. It doesn't get any more fresh than that. Order yours now. Just go to grassrootscoffee.com and choose the coffee you want and how you want it and join me. Let's step up our coffee game together and also support a great local business. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour from townhall.com. I'm John Scott. California has been hit with more turbulent weather. The National Weather Service warning of a relentless parade of atmospheric rivers, storms that are 
Long plumes of moisture stretching out into the Pacific, capable of dropping staggering amounts of rain and snow. National Weather Service meteorologist Braden Murdoch says the ground is already saturated from the previous atmospheric rivers. We've been seeing plenty of uh, urban flooding. Um, we've also been seeing some of our streams and rivers hit their capacities with our last few systems. And this system is going to do the same. We're going to be seeing plenty of rainfall, um, and eventually it's going to put some stress on our rivers and streams, and a lot of areas are setting up for plenty of urban flooding once again. The storms won't be enough to officially end California's ongoing drought, but they have helped. The Colorado avalanche bearing two men on snowmobiles, killing one and leaving the other missing. That avalanche near the town of Winter Park. Also at townhall.com, we're learning more about the Virginia teacher who was shot and wounded last week. And the six-year-old authorities say shot her. The teacher is identified as 25-year-old Abby Zwerner of Rich Neck Elementary in Newport News, Virginia. That from a former member of the Newport News School Board. Police said she had life-threatening injuries when she was shot on Friday, but she is said to be improving and her condition is now stable. The police chief has said a six-year-old boy shot her in a first-grade classroom during an altercation. He was taken into custody. Police are not saying what led to the altercation, how the boy got the gun, or who owns it. The mayor says the boy is getting the services he needs right now, but won't say where he's being held. I'm Rita Foley. And the Dow is now ahead 39 points. Uh, the NASDAQ 163 points up. More at townhall.com. You know that your dollar doesn't go as far as it used to. At Key City Capital, we know that as well and would like you to know about investments we believe can make sense in an inflationary environment. For more details, check us out at keycitycapital.com. Key City offers passive investments in cash flowing real estate that can help offer a hedge against inflation and stock market volatility. When prices rise, more couples and families further delay home ownership. Key City Capital owns thousands of rental units with attractive prospects for income and appreciation as more and more renters apply to live in their communities. Let the team at Key City Capital grow your wealth and diversify your investment portfolio. Connect with them today at keycitycapital.com or call 817-912-1569, 817-912-1569. Again, that's keycitycapital.com or call 817-912-1569, 817-912-1569. Every day, Sellers makes life a little better for homeowners, helping them find the best design ideas for their homes with the best quality tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Even mosaics, ceramic, and vinyl solutions are at their fingertips in their remarkable showroom. Maybe it's time for you to get the Sellers Advantage for your home or office. Find them on Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhem Drive, or online at SellersTile.com. For style, quality, and design, get the Sellers Advantage. In Tallahassee, call 656-8453. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I check my check my gear, my man. Check, I I got nothing going on in here. I mean, you're on the air. Yeah, it's going. This is weird. So my volume is where it always is. 
at least on the uh, the mega speakers here. And yes, the modulation on our. I've got devices. I've got nothing in my ears. I, I well, so forgive me, guys. I I can't hear myself at all. So we'll we'll just do this number and we'll go on with the show. It'll be all right. I don't know what there it is. Now it's working. It's working. Did you just click it and click it off again? <laughs> I took the fader and I gave it a little jiggle. That's weird. Now it's loud. <laughs> Great radio, Jeff. Right, there you go. Now it's really loud. All right, here we go. Let's let's we carry still on. Gotta, I move the fader again we, to bring it down. We're for good. You. We're good. It's, right. it's happening. It's happening. All three teams in the state of Florida made the playoffs, buddy. How about that? I, I was trying to think about. It's probably happened more recent than I realized, but it, it doesn't doesn't feel like it. No, I know. In fact, the uh, the, the last exact time number. it happened, yeah, when nineteen ninety nine. Wow, you got to go back to Prince. That is crazy. Well, good on you, Dolphins, Jags, and Bucks. I think it's hilarious that the Bucks are rolling into the playoffs, just double middle finger to everybody, back to back, back to back conference champ or division champs, guys. Suck it. Yeah, honestly, uh, when I saw the starters, I thought, oh, lovey, never change. And um, once they came out and Atlanta made the rally, honestly, walking around from country to country, enjoying their finest beverages, perhaps a espresso martini. I said to Jamie, I hope we finish eight and nine. It's better this way. It feels better. Oh, this way. yeah. If you're going to be bad, be bad and get in sub 500. And then it would be hilarious to watch them uh, beat Dallas again. You, Dallas fans are sitting there thinking, this is not good. This is a nightmare. Their quarterback is suffering a crisis of confidence. They can't run the ball anymore. And now you're getting going against a team that when they decide to stop the run does, if they bother to effort. How did you feel about Monday night football, though, that it was slated for the Monday night wild card game? I didn't. I, I it didn't bother me. I just I, I laughed mm. that we're in the playoffs and I didn't think anything of it really. I was greedy because I'm assuming Jensen is going to somehow make it on that football field and that offensive line becomes something different and we're going to go make a run. We're going to make a run at this thing. I have not posited such a delusion. It's not a delusion in the NFC. If we were in the AFC, it would be a delusion. Yeah. The NFC is open for business. I would tell you, yeah, listen, I, do I think Philadelphia is strong? No. The rest of the teams that are in Seattle, no. I mean, you can go through a lot of these. Just San Francisco, quarterback issues. Yeah. They've got a lot of good pieces, but quarterback issues, Minnesota, defensive issues. And there it is. Yeah, and you're playing Dallas. Minnesota feels like they're just flat out not good. And they're playing the Giants. Two, <laughs> feels like a battle of nine and eights, even though Minnesota's got an excellent record this yeah, year. Yeah, it feels like the NFC is wide open. And uh, you're right. I guess it, it would really anger people. <laughs> Come on, run. I would smile ear to ear. Well, you know, we've seen this is not unprecedented. We've seen this before. I mean, the New Orleans Seattle game is famous for this. And uh, Seattle had no business and, you know, all that happened. But um, you're right. If you're healthy and you can stop the run, it's not like right now Dak's playing well throwing the football. He's wildly inconsistent, turning the football over. We'll see. One of the biggest blowouts, and I use that in quotations, of the year for the Bucs was week one against the Cowboys. Gave up three points. Yo, well, yeah, what was the final of that game, though? Like 19-3. Was a weird, Couldn't score in the red zone. Little did weird, we know. Yeah. We didn't know where There's no Jensen going. then, either. Look out. <laughs> I just feel like you, you don't want to play the team that is uh, under 500. You, you can't win for losing. You, you win the game. And people will go, well, uh, yeah, you beat the Bucs. They were 8-9. and nine. You better beat the Bucs. You lose to the Bucs. You're the laughing stock of football. Even though you know that it's not as if the Bucs don't have some really good personnel. And you happen to be the Dallas Cowboys who will command extra conversation no matter what happens? Yeah. yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. In the AFC, we would be doomed because the Bucs are not beating the Chiefs, the Bills, or the Bengals. They're not beating any of those teams. Correct. Uh, and I, you know, if, if, if you had to pit them against other AFC teams, they could beat the Dolphins. Yes. They could beat the Ravens. Yes. As currently constructed, they could beat the chargers, of course, cause they're poorly mm -hmm. coached. Yep. Um, I don't think they'd beat the Jags could, by the way, uh, Trevor he, was kind of scared on. Well, Saturday. he wasn't kind of scared. He was terrible. Yeah. He was terrible. Now he hasn't been terrible prior to that game. He's been a good reason for them to win games, but there, that was, mm, that was dicey. And he's fortunate they get a strip sack, kind of. And that's a scoop and score, and there you, you go. You didn't think it was? Uh, debatable. 
but yeah. I thought it was less debatable than the Aaron Rodgers fumble. I wasn't, it wasn't ruled a fumble. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, I listen, I wouldn't have overturned it or anything. I, it wasn't that obvious. But I just, okay, you got very lucky because they were going to straight up lose that game, and that would have been disastrous. To Josh Dobbs. Well, and just moreover, my man just steady missing wide open receivers. Yeah. What are we doing here? And you're rooting for Dobbs in that game. I'm not a, like Tennessee is just one of those ugh, teams to me. Always has been. Even going back to Eddie George. But I'm indifferent about this. But yeah, Dobbs man. by the end of the game was like Rocky Four. I'm like, my man is taking a beating. Yeah. And he is hanging in there. You could see it. You know, he's he's lining up, he's getting ready to go through the cadence, and the look in his eyes is just, my God, I don't know how I'm standing right now. And it wasn't his fault. In the end, it wasn't. Strip sack is not on you necessarily. No. You, know, you got to block somebody, but uh, yeah, that, that was uh, it was it was fascinating to to watch play out, and I think the playoffs are going to be riveting. Uh, the NFC is going to wide open as you're as you're talking about. I mean, you're going to watch all these games just because there's no certainty. You're not saying, oh well, this is a this is a foregone conclusion. I I wonder, and I'm I'm worried that there's not going to be a lot of entertaining football. I think there's going to be a lot of close football this weekend, but I don't know about You think it's going to be poor play? Yeah, I mean, Cincinnati, Baltimore, no. Bucks, Dallas might be a race to 17. You could see Vikings and Giants being ugly. They just played a couple weeks ago, but and it was a, a fun game. That was the 60-yard kick, but that could be a rough one. L.A. and Jags on Saturday night, I don't know, man. That could be a race to 21 because Staley refuses to score. I could see, I hope it's. I hope that's not the case, but I could just, see wild card weekend being a little bit of a yeah so mm. we've got seattle at san francisco that doesn't feel like it'll be a good game you're right i do think chargers jags should be fun i'm gonna pick the jags in that game by the way they shouldn't based on talent but again you got a you got a poor coach out there in los angeles uh dolphins at buffalo that's going to be a cakewalk for the for the uh, buffalo bills i mean yeah. i feel like that game they could they could beat miami senseless that could be an ugly who's game. the quarterback is it gonna be skyler again uh, it, I don't think it's going to matter. The, the, I think Miami's going to go get blown the hell out is what's going to happen there. Give Tyreek Hill the ball. And then, yeah, you're right. It could be a weird week. But from there, I, I have a feeling Dallas and Tampa Bay is going to be a good game. Well, the thing is, you know, they can't schedule us on Saturday the following week. If the Bucks win, whoever wins that game is playing on Sunday the following week. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, I, I, it's funny, I want to pull the trigger. We're going to see how... The, can you imagine the? It started today, I'm sure, and I don't watch the the, the daytime talk shows because they're unbelievably annoying, and we're in here. But uh, the debate—I hey, saw Bayless had a great week last week. Uh, did he say something stupid again? Oh, of course, well, well, the Demar Hamlin thing. I didn't even see what he said, but I don't pay attention to him. But what what I was going to say was that uh, basically, I can only imagine that every ounce of energy spent covering the NFL playoffs is going to be on the Dallas Cowboys until they're out. And so you can't imagine. I mean, I you know, a lot of guys are perfectly capable of not paying attention to that stuff and not feeling the weight that comes along with expectation. But a lot of guys aren't. And nobody feels that effect, the Dallas effect, uh, more, I think, than Dak. And I got to I mean, he, the weight of the world has to be on that guy's shoulders. McCarthy doesn't respond to this very well either because it made its way to the surface in Green Bay, even though he had, you know, engineered, helped engineer a Super Bowl by the end of his tenure. Green Bay doesn't typically have, and I, I know I'm saying that with Aaron Rodgers, it took Aaron Rodgers for them to be that type of storyline consistently with drama. Like with Brett Favre, it was interceptions and touchdowns, entertainment. But they didn't have that kind of, uh, remember T.O. and McNabb with the mm -hmm. Eagles, mm -hmm. the Cowboys always. Yeah. The 49ers have had their run. The hell, the Bucks this year have had their fair share of drama. Mm, yeah, Green Bay doesn't much. typically, but Mike McCarthy was known far and wide as this dude is blowing it. This guy's killing you. And here he has another chance to be that same McCarthy a week from tonight. Weird though, because you look at that Green Bay team and you would have thought that that with, with McCarthy's exodus, it would have moved on and, and they are drama filled on the regular. And again, last night, what are you doing as a veteran player pushing a trainer? What are you doing? I, I, that would make you as a teammate want to fight your team, your oh, teammate. Man. How about the week he chose to do it? What, in just, which trainers yeah, are well, lauded around the world yes. as doing their job and saving somebody's life. Yeah. Uh, Medical personnel just, and trainers. But it's just, it's like the, the that kind of thing happens seemingly every other week in Green Bay where you're asking questions about focus, personnel 
whether or not they're all pulling in the same direction. Should we have gone for it on fourth right. down? All that stuff continues, and Aaron is forever. Um, you know, he stirs the pot too, and he was ridiculous again coming off. I mean, so I would I'd be frustrated as a Green Bay fan, and they, all those players on defense that they have, they should be winning more games. So one thing I took the time to read yesterday because I knew it was going to read like this. Adam Schefter put out a story about the future of Sean McVay in in Los Angeles. Like it's this huge story. And clearly he is doing the thing that Chris Broussard did for Dwight Howard back in the day. Yeah. Where they're, they're just taking their texts and making yeah, them a, just making them a story. Yeah. 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 And it said something to the effect of he's so drained that McVay is so drained. He doesn't know if he has it in him to be the coach next year, considering all that's happened to him in the last 12 months. And this is a news story on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah. It's talking true. about McVay. So, so he's going to be on television is what's going to happen. Yeah, he's going to take the job. Uh, if he's smart, he'll take the job that uh, what's-his-face vacates. Oh, Sean Payton? Yeah. yeah. Take the job Sean Payton vacates. Go do that for two years. Get the itch again to come back. It'll be some story that he forwards right. again about well, how he got his life ready prior. to win. Of course. You, you don't want to be stuck in L.A. right now with that salary cap situation and no draft picks and an aging roster after a terrible season and guys going through the motion. Good luck with that. They're not going to win anytime soon, but that's why they anted up, won a Super Bowl, and that's kind of the price you pay. It's tough. Unless you're a young team. Like, see, it, it couldn't have worked out any better than the way it worked out for Andy Reid in Kansas City, and he gets a lot of credit for that, and you know, obviously, but when you have a preternaturally gifted and and hardworking superstar at quarterback that is just getting going, like you, you know, at the time that they won the Super Bowl, you're, he's entering into this other realm. They pay him a gazillion dollars, but there's money left over. They retain most of that roster that wins the Super Bowl. They're able to sustain excellence year over it. That is a perfect situation to be in. So here's the graph real quick. It'll make you nauseated because everybody's got stuff in their life. And, and I'm not insensitive to the fact that everybody's got stuff going on in their life. But this is Adam Schefter writing about Sean McVay. McVay's gone back and forth on the decision and needs the time to get away to process all that has transpired over the past year. Winning a Super Bowl, being courted to work in television, getting married, watching his wife's home country of Ukraine invaded losing his grandfather, and then coaching a team that has fallen short of expectations. That is a paragraph by Schefter in a news story talking about his future. Yeah, well, it's, yes, obviously. What a horrible, horrible existence, McVeigh. Yeah. Having lost four grandparents, I got to tell you, I don't know. I'll, I don't know how you do it. I'll give him the, uh, I'll, I'll give him, I suppose, the stressor of his wife's angst, given her home country situation, but. He, did he posit that? He's like, listen. That's I mean, clearly he told him. Uh, listen, Adam, between winning the Super Bowl and getting married. Think about that list. That's the part. My winning the Super Bowl leads it. It leads the well, list. My, my favorite part of that is like all of these incredible wins, the things that everybody would dream of, lauded as the most innovative and best coach in the game, winning a Super Bowl, making millions of dollars, getting married presumably to somebody you really love and are excited to be with for the rest of your life, these life events that people strive towards, and then you're going to turn around and say to your employer, it's just too much. <laughs> all of these successes, all of this money and fame and good fortune, I can't, guys. I just think about that sentence. I'm going to have to leave. I can't deal with all of the great things that are happening in my life on a daily basis. I mean, he texted Schefter bullet points of and all then, that he's gone through in the last And year. then, Adam, you know what? I wasn't expecting this either. Just so you know, I was blindsided by this. But uh, if that wasn't enough, winning a Super Bowl, becoming rich beyond my wildest dreams, getting married, vacationing in Maldives. Uh, you know, you know uh, TV wants to be really bad, too. That's you know, very stressful. It's, I mean, I very constantly stressful. hear the voice of my agent. He's calling every day with more offers more millions of dollars being thrown my way for these other vocations. I mean, it's just, I don't, it's so much, but then my wife bought me a yacht and I mean, Jesus, there's only so much a man can take. 
It's like the obnoxious truck commercial that they roll out every Christmas with those two people in the mountains and their truck comes around the corner. They're like, oh, I'm so rich. I bought you a truck, too. And you got me the same truck. Aren't we cute? He's the guy who texts back when Adam says, unbelievable. I mean, just so sad what's happened to DeMar Hamlin. And McVay's like, I've had a tough year, too, man. Unbelievable. I feel for DeMar because I've had a tough go. My grandfather just passed. You know, I understand what he's going through. My 98-year-old grandfather just passed away. And, you know, I was reminded when DeMar laid there lifeless. Just how tough a year it's been for us all. What the? Adam, I need you to write, I need time to decompress. (laughs) It has nothing to do with ratcheting up offers from television and having to bid against each other at all. I, it, would, it might look like that from afar. Uh, I'm playing one against the other to make more money or that I don't want to be part of a rebuild because obviously we have no picks and our guys are old and not. I don't have a quarterback. Can you slip Ukraine in there, please, Adam? And don't think for a second. I don't lay at night thinking about the foreign fine people of the Ukraine. Once sovereign nation being invaded. I mean, my wife and I, we talk about this all the time. I help, When do I coach football? When do I have time? I'll have enough bandwidth for television, though. Now that I think about it, it's probably good that she bought me the yacht because I need some time away. Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, Orchard TV. Car accident? Call 777-7777 for Basic Brooks. So let's say you're considering buying a new home in the current climate. We've all heard that demand is high, inventory is low. So how do you get a leg up on the rest of the buyers all making offers on the same house as you? Oh, that's a toughie. But the first place I'd suggest you start is with a call to my friend Shannon at Legendary Home Loans. Shannon will set you up with a complete pre-approval underwriting. This used to be an upgrade, but nowadays it's got to be standard. You want to get your offer on a new home pushed to the front of the line, you need a TBD full underwriting approval from Legendary Home Loans. You'll shorten or even remove your financing contingency, and the sellers will know that your offer is real and ready to go. It's tough out there these days, folks. So why not have the advantage of a proven winning team in your huddle? Get pre-approval underwriting from my friend Shannon with the one and only legendary home loans. Call now, 844-FSU-LOAN, 844-FSU-LOAN, or just visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender, NMLS number 2270146. We understand how important it is to have transportation you can rely on. So no matter what the road ahead brings, will be there, offering you and your family the support that's made Farm Bureau Insurance a trusted name for over 70 years. You deserve more. You deserve a promise. I'm Andy Cohen with Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Please call me at 850-671-FARM. Clean, renewable energy means fresher air, healthier residents, new green jobs, and a stronger, more resilient community. How we get there is up to you. Share your input today to help shape the Tallahassee of tomorrow. Take the clean energy survey at talgov.com. Give your business a facelift with a modern, consistent, creative brand overhaul from Curiosity Marketing Group. These days, it's not enough for your business just to have a standard website or a Google listing to reach your customers. Your business needs to stand out with eye-popping branding, modern web development, and strong marketing. And it takes a team to pull it all together. Words and websites matter. At Curiosity, we make the most of yours. Find out more at curiositymg.com. I used to fight almost on a daily basis working on my business website. I'm a pretty smart guy, but I could never get it to function the way I needed it to, and I was losing customers because of it. That's when I called Curiosity Marketing. They listened, they understood, we collaborated, and in the end, they delivered beyond my highest expectations. Now, I can barely keep up with the work. They say the future belongs to the curious, and now I'm excited about the future of my business. Find out more at curiositymg.com. At Epps Decorating Center, we're your locally owned Benjamin Moore retailer. We're your store for quality with brilliant and durable paints in a variety of sheens and thousands of colors. We're your store for service with one-on-one advice for contractors and homeowners. We're your local experts, and we're here to help with all your painting projects. Benjamin Moore, available at Epps Decorating Center with two locations in Tallahassee. Find a store near you and visit EppsDecorating.com. That's Epps Decorating. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to Orange Theory Fitness fitness.com welcome back to the jeff cameron show sponsored by legendary home loans a mortgage experience designed around speed simplicity and customer service before you buy your next home contact our friend shannon young with legendary home loans visit fsuhomeloans.com fsuhomeloans.com My friends at Peace Park Roofing and Construction, they do things the right way to safe way. They've got employees. They undergo routine safety training every Monday. It's Monday. Training today. Make sure they get up. Well, they go through training every Monday, but that's where it's convenient. That's how it has to work. Also, they do metal roofs. You didn't know that. Long lasting, durable. You're in luck. Make it happen. Peace Park Enterprise Roofing and Construction. Best in town. Period. Call today. One three four zero. Get a free quote today at peaceparkconstruction.com. Our audio is freaking happy. Don't know what is happening with that and why. Uh, hang in there. As Tom noted earlier, uh, if you're having trouble with this, um, then you'll be able to listen to the podcast later today and we'll Clear. I apologize. Uh, we, we had a lot of different things happen over the last three weeks in the studio in terms of a new board, new sound stuff. Trying to get the gremlins uh, out of there, man. You think you got it fixed? Perhaps. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Are you taking a 13? You asked about it. Um, I am tempted to take the 13. It's just been that kind of a year for college football. It's been that kind of a playoff, which goes against the set. Playoff is First weekend or the first division kind of set of games are usually blow out awful football. And those were great. So why would I believe that Georgia, who's played down to the competition earlier this year, is magically going to be somebody who blows out a group in TCU that has proven to be game? Yeah, they're game. I, the, the, the problem you have, obviously, this is the final game. There's no more next week. So they're going to be hyper-focused this year, right? If they're ever going to be locked in and ready to go. It should have been for Ohio State. You think that they were reading the pleasure? No, but I think Ohio, themselves? No, but I believe Ohio State. Arms to do something about it. Um, they turned that in his fourth best. That it, it was an elite offense for most of the year. Now, their defense was good and it showed once again, including Ohio State. But I, I mean, they have NFL players all over the place. The other argument you could make if you're trying to teach the inner transitive to make yeah. that tonight yeah. is that Kansas State started out and it was cute when they played Alabama. And then when Alabama put the switch in the Super Bowl, peace out. That was a scary proposition for SEC versus Big 12 relative strength. That yeah, could be yeah. a point that you look at for just if you're trying to compare apples to apples yeah. and you realize that there's not apples at all. I didn't really think about what we're talking about here. I, and we'll talk to Ira here in a second. But think about what we, what we anticipated coming into the season. Obviously, everybody knew Georgia, despite having half the roster drafted at the NFL. You knew they were loaded because of the consistency in recruiting rankings and what they've done in talent acquisition. Nobody would have recognized TCU as an elite team. You would have said that TCU could be a decent team, maybe scare some folks in the Big 12. But the thought of them playing for a national championship was on nobody's mind. And again, I will reiterate what I said last hour. I think it's very good for college football. This kind of thing doesn't happen in college football. It is a sport that has forever been dominated by the Blue Bloods of the game. Now, every now and again, somebody emerges as a future Blue Blood. Or they had to kick down the door and become one of those kinds of programs. And we sometimes watch that develop, but 
again, it's typically not Cinderella laden. You don't get that in college football. Because bigger, stronger, faster. Teams that accrue that kind of talent and to do so over year, over year, and TCU hasn't been one of those. So to see them here is a surprise. I think good for the game. Very good for the game. Orchard.com, my man. Every Monday, let's go now. Hello, good sir. How are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm well, buddy. I am well. I'm excited about tonight's game. I just hope it's a good one. Are you picking uh, Georgia to win comfortably, or do you think it's going to be a good game? I like it to be a good game, and I like TCU's quarterback uh, a lot. Yeah, he's tough. I, I think Georgia, I think last week was the worst thing that could happen to TCU. So mm-hmm. I think Georgia's going to have uh, their full attention, and uh, I have a feeling it's going to be a pretty dominant performance. All right, so Florida State gets the good news since we last talked. Jared Verse is coming back. It seems that um, every minute of every day is filled with good news for Florida State, even when we hear rumors that people are trying to poach players off their roster, in-state rivals and the like. Florida State gets a yes. No, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Uh, What'd you make of the Verse decision? And obviously, are you in the camp now that says this is a national championship contending team or are we just going to pump the brakes a little bit here and say, let's look at them as an ACC championship team, and then we'll discuss the larger picture later? Man, there is a lot there, Jeff. Uh, Come on, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the one hand, look, I'm a, you know, it's this is a year. It's it's kind of I'm not going to say it's do or die, but they are putting all their chips on the table for this year. Um, this isn't. I think I heard you and Tom talking about it last hour. Yeah. Um, this isn't a case where. Uh, you know, it's going to be a continue to be a build in process. I mean, they see the door open next year. I think there's a that's a big part of the reason all these guys decided to come back. Jordan Travis knows he only has one more year. Uh, you know, all these other guys are trying to make it one big year. So I, to think that Florida State's going to be better two years from now than next year is probably not likely, even in this transfer portal world. Um, so I think I think Florida State's all in, and and the goal is to win the ACC, and I think that's definitely the goal. But but if you do that. That should put you in contention for the playoff. And if you get to the playoff, then yeah, man, you're you're trying to win it all. So uh, I don't think it's outrageous for Florida State to be considered a contender to win it all. Uh, but yeah, I don't know that you're you're uh, put printing out uh, tickets for 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 the championship game just yet. But 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 certainly, I think Florida State's going to be in that conversation. It feels weird though, doesn't it, Ira? It just feels weird, despite all the abundance of good news. It's like there's a voice inside your head that kind of says, well, let's slow down here. It, it's, it's not normal to watch a team go from five and seven and then finally have a winning season for the first time in a number of years to we're going for a national championship. It doesn't that doesn't usually play out that way. No, and I mean, you do want to try to be somewhat cautious uh, because, like you said, when you say it, it, it it's hard to say. Um, but but at the same time, when you look at the landscape of the sport. So much of the challenge now for all teams all across the country is going to be player retention. Uh, you know, shoot, 30 years ago, the question, you know, you didn't have players that left early for the NFL. Then you had to deal with that. Now you have to deal with not only players leaving for early for the NFL, but players possibly going to other teams mm-hmm. and derailing your season. So Florida State has seemed to have navigate that pretty well. Going back to, you know, you asked about Jared Verse, and, and there's, a, there's a bunch of other guys on this team that they weren't 100% sure that we're going to come back, but they are. And so, when you look at other teams that are probably going to have some issues retaining their roster and, and players going to the NFL and all that. And it's so hard to sustain, I think, excellence at this, in this day and age, if you're not Alabama or Georgia or maybe one or two other teams, that yeah, that, that if you have a team, that's a very good college football team, which I think Florida state was this year and you bring just about everybody back. And, and, you know, again, you go down the list, you bring back probably the best quarterback in the ACC, arguably the best quarterback in the ACC, Probably, probably the best running back in the ACC, probably the best pass rusher in the ACC, maybe one of the best defensive linemen in the ACC, and, and, and maybe two of the best defensive tackles in the ACC. So you go down that list, and it's like, okay, well, well, if not Florida State, who then? So, yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's amazingly how quickly it's, it's happened. But I think the best thing is, and Florida State fans should you know, support whoever they want to support that they think made this happen, whether it's buying season tickets, whether it's being a part of Seminole Boosters, whether it's joining Battles End or Rising Spear or any of these different collectives, because clearly there's been a joint, uh, I guess, reckoning that this door is open for Florida State in 2023, and they're pretty intent on trying to crash through it. That's a good point. 
It's a good point. I told everybody to recognize the stage that Florida State finds themselves in and enjoy it while it lasts because we do know changes will come as expectations are ratcheted up. Things begin to change when you have to meet heightened expectations. Over the weekend, Leonard Hamilton win number 600, really 622, and also career win 400 at FSU, which is really win 422 at FSU. Um, Talk about what that means in your mind. Obviously, we both love and respect Leonard Hamilton, the man, but he's been a damn fine coach. When you consider, and I'll put this out there for people, I know you know this, Ira, Leonard Hamilton uh, is, is one of only five coaches with at least 400 wins at an ACC school. The others are Mike Krzyzewski, Dean Smith, Roy Williams, and Gary Williams. Uh, pretty amazing list. <laughs> That's a pretty good group. I want my name with that group. I mean, think about uh, that. Yeah, it's Leonard Hamilton, Mike Krzyzewski, Dean Smith, Roy Williams, Gary Williams. That's incredible. Well, you think about his career where it was in 2002 when Florida State hired him. Dave Hart was the athletic director at the time. They bring him in. My man, Dave Hart. He was a very well-known commodity at that point. He had had success at Miami, which is a program that, I mean, growing up down there, and you're well aware. Yeah. I mean, it was it was it was about to be. They were going to pull the plug on the UM basketball, mm-hmm. and then they kind of brought it back. And Leonard Hamilton obviously had a tremendous run there. Some of the things he did there. If you go back, if people don't, if people aren't our age, if people are younger than thirty or thirty-five, and they go back and go back and look and see what Leonard Hamilton did, I don't know if you can appreciate what he did in the Big East. Miami had a year where they didn't lose on the road in the Big East. Yeah, they, I mean, they were they were unbelievable. They were so good uh, for a program that was terrible. So he had that run, and then he gets hired in the NBA. It doesn't go well there. Dysfunctional system with the Wizards, but then he kind of gets his second chapter at Florida State, and it's the best thing he's probably ever done in his career. And so it's, it's really remarkable. And, and I think Corey wrote about it in his column. He did. Good yeah. point that, you know, it's not just the wins. It's, it's the way he's, what he's done for these young men, what he's done for these families. It's uh, it's been fun to watch, man. I, you know, at some point we all know it's going to come to an end. We hope it ends with more wins than what we saw in the first half of the season. And I think it might, um, but, but really more than anything, it's just been fun to, and I'm not trying to say that this year would be even be the end, but I'm just saying, this, these next few years, however many it is, it's just uh, it's been cool to watch the, the 20 years to get to this point. Well, and as it pertains to this year, the season's going to get a little bit more interesting because Bob Miller's suspension is over, and that's a huge roster addition. You and I both know what, you know, I mean, this is a guy that will probably be Florida State's best player or one of the two best players on the team um, just because of the matchup nightmare that he, he establishes. And, you know, we only saw him in that exhibition game against Newberry College. Uh, he was very impressive just physically, the way he moves, and, and he, can, he can switch and guard and he can shoot. He can do a lot of different things. Um, you know, that is, a, that is a matchup problem for opposing teams. And, you know, that could ensure, Ira, that the Knowles finish, I don't know, with a winning record in, in what is certainly a less than formidable ACC. Um, and he makes his debut this Wednesday against Wake. This should be fun. There's no doubt, man. And, and you know, and I, I toned down Corey's column a little bit. I, you know, I was giving, giving it a read because he, he had in there basically that, you know, look, this team's not going to make the tournament. This team's not going to – I think he said they're not going to finish with a winning record. And I, he's talking about overall. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's, but they're 16 under 500 right now. It's not like this is an unbelievable ACC. No. Uh, I don't think it's out of the realm that they get back – they finish the season. They, they finish with a, a, a above 500 record overall. I think there's a good chance they will be – there's a pretty solid chance they'll be over 500 in the ACC. And I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not going to predict that they're going to make a run in the tournament, but I wouldn't rule it out because they are playing so much better. And this is not a great ACC. And if one or two really good teams get knocked out, you don't know what could happen in the tournament. So I just, uh, you know, look, I, I think it's, I'm just glad that they're competing. I'm glad Matthew Cleveland has become what he's become, which we all thought he could become. Uh, and then you, you got these role players, Darren Green and, other guys kind of stepping up, and then now you get Bob and Miller, who might be their best player overall. It's certainly, uh, I think their best pro prospect, and uh, you know it, it's, it gives you a reason to watch these last sixteen games for sure. Yeah, and twenty three assists against nine turnovers is a recipe to beat a lot of people. That's what they did against Georgia Tech. That's uh, very very impressive, and uh, I don't know they may be they may be fun again. So we'll, we'll have to pay our attention and turn our gaze to Florida State basketball again. Always appreciate it, brother. Be well. Thanks, Jeff. See you, man. Yep. That's uh, irishfellwarchant.com. Yeah, think about this. Matthew Cleveland just uh, just had his fifth consecutive double-double. 
And you think about the way his season started, a nightmare. Uh, he looked like a guy who, who was doing a couple of things. One, I think he was trying to overcome some sort of ailment. I, I don't know if he was, you know, like a, I don't know, his bad back. So he, he wasn't moving. He, he, he didn't look fluid in his movements. He didn't look athletic. And you think about the end of last year, how athletic he looked, how strong he was. The thing that we knocked, what we knocked about Matthew Cleveland last year was he couldn't shoot a lick. He couldn't shoot. Couldn't make free throws, couldn't shoot, period. It's tough to be a good basketball player when you can't shoot. But he was not, it wasn't because he was lacking athleticism. Maybe it's because television is just knocking on his door and it's just so much stress. <laughs> pulling at his heart. In yeah. his life. Got Could offers be. all over the place. But he was 9 of 16 in this game, 1 of 2 from 3. Had 12 boards. You know, every night that you, there's a chance you're going to get Darren Green knocking down several threes. He had 18 points in the game, 4 of 11 from 3. Uh, Caleb Mills is what he is. Uh, he's he, whatever. The recipe is there. Ira's descriptor of one magical week in Greensboro holds water. Jalen Worley dunking on that kid. Oh, that was to be seen on repeat. That was hilarious. Unkind. That was a, a good homage to Trent Forrest and Jordan Wara. Mm -hmm. I would say that was right. get you some of that. You had a couple of good teams in the conference. Maybe they don't care to be there one afternoon. They're playing in that two o'clock window on a Friday, and they're like, I don't want to be here. They lose, and now. One of the favorites is out, another favorite's out, and here you go. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not absurd. That's the best thing you can say is it's not crazy to think that they'll be an interesting team down the stretch and a problem matchup for a lot of people. Uh, given the way the season started, that is a revelation in and of itself. What if their resume was strong enough that they get close enough to 500? And you could say their record from December, whatever, through Is the end the, of the yeah, year. Yeah, and the committee's like, well, you know, they didn't have. And the selection committee says, you know what, NCAA proper, screw you. You got it wrong. So this kid being out for 16 games hindered them in such a way well, with the did. injuries that it was irreparable damage that they somehow found a way like the Undertaker to come out of the coffin. <laughs> and they are a 12 seed. <laughs> Florida State's a 12 seed. Different ball club than they were back in November. Yeah, so they tried to burn down the funeral home, but Florida State rose from the ashes. You burned <laughs> the funeral home. <laughs> no, it's, it's you know, well, so we were going back to this. We're talking about the NCAA and the absurdity at, all the time, uh, I think, of these things. And, you know, I mentioned that Ham really has 622 wins and 422 at FSU and, and the prestigious group of coaches that he joins in doing that. Uh, if the fools at the NCAA hadn't docked him those 22 wins because of the music appreciation class, which, by the way, was open to all FSU students back in 07, 08. Meanwhile, the NCAA let North Carolina, of course, operate an entire bogus academic program for 20 plus years to the benefit of their athletes, a violation that some would say warrants the death penalty, and they didn't even get a slap on the wrist. Just saying, remember that happened. That's a thing. And it's also why nobody takes the NCAA serious. And they're about to come calling on Michigan for football violations. And if you're Michigan, you know, send back a picture of your genitalia. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, that, here's my return to your email. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, is that a Wolverine? What is, what is, what is this? What, what does is this mean? That? Bob, Bob, come in here and look at this. I got an email from Harbaugh. Would you look at that? What do you think of that? That's terrible. How many Bobs work on the main floor of the NCAA? They're all Bob. They're all over the age of 68. Bob, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, Orange and TV. Your local news now. A tire blowout led to the death of a Tallahassee woman on Friday afternoon. It happened on State Road 20 in Leon County just before 4 p.m. The 79-year-old woman was traveling east on the road when a rear tire blew out on the car she was driving. The woman then drove into the westbound lane and was T-boned by a pickup truck that attempted to swerve out of the way to avoid her. The driver of the truck, a 42-year-old man from Hosford, was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Troopers said the woman died at the scene. Two familiar faces for the Special Olympics Florida are now being recognized for their dedication to the organization. Robert Jackson of Gadsden County and Melba Jacobs of Leon County joined five others in the Hall of Fame class of 2022. Melba Jacobs has been a volunteer, a coach, and much more, helping the organization expand into more than a dozen Leon County schools. And Robert Jackson's ties to the organization go all the way back to its founding in 1972. Jackson began competing at just 13 years old, participating in a tug of war at the first game. This is Rachel and Nay with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. 
This is meteorologist Paul Frobley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Highs level off around 68 this afternoon. Under sunny skies, northerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Lows around 41 tonight, partly cloudy. High temperatures reach up to 68 tomorrow, mainly sunny. Highs level off around 72 Wednesday under mainly sunny skies. 75 Thursday, chance for scattered storms. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 66. Your body is a masterpiece designed to heal itself from within. Learn how to maximize your health by tuning in to Phenomenal Health with me, Dr. Ryan Finn. Saturdays at 2.30, experience true health today and call Finn Chiropractic at 386-7700. Leaky faucet, busted pipes, clogged toilet, m l Plumbing is here for you. For all commercial, construction, and residential plumbing issues, call m l Plumbing at 575-9393 or visit online at mnlplumbing.com. Jeff, look at this beautiful day, man. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly. I like it. You know, I'm a colder weather guy, but I worry about it for you because uh, you can't wear the Speedo in oh, the cold. I mean, geez. you know what I'm saying? You don't want to wear a Speedo in the cold. Jeff, it's always Speedo weather, man. We can always do this. Besides, my pool, it's heated. Which means you're insufferable in a Speedo year-round. Cannonball! Still gross. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Hey, Greg Tish here along with Matty Rowe. And you can listen to us Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3. Matt, we give away a couple things each week. Just a few. We've got the Florida Farm Bureau Insurance Wheel of Food. We have Give Me a Second, where we play a second of a song, and you guess that song. And we also play FLA or Nay. We have a lot of fun Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on The Greg Tish Show. I think that's enough. We can talk about our feelings. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> the Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and... Really? Just beat up the paper. I'm so paper, glad paper. the cans on the uh, head were on the hat no, and not in the. You're talking about cans oh, again. Who's Sunday? <laughs> the cans on the head, yeah. Yeah, they were not over the ears. What hurt? Paper. Don't forget my friends, about my friend Shannon and uh, Chad. They're both excellent at what they do. Legendary home loan. Hometown Hero Loan Program. I've talked to you guys about that a lot. And uh, they make a difference. It's time to uh, buy a new home. Perhaps they're going to waive those lender fees for all the hometown heroes. That's over $1,600 worth of savings there. They'll waive some more money if you choose their preferred title company. Gets up over $2,000 in savings. That's a good thing. Save as much money as you possibly can. If you are active military, a veteran, police officer, firefighter, nurse, or a school teacher, they're looking to help you out. To Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans, ask about their Hometown Heroes program. Call 844-FSU-LOAN. That's 844-FSU-LOAN. You can always visit them, fsuhomeloans.com. It's fsuhomeloans.com. You want to do some tub talk? A little pinch of penny tub talk, buddy? Let's go. Let's do it. It's time for Tub Talk, brought to you by Pinch of Penny Pools and Spas. Buy yourself the hot tub you've always wanted at the price you've always wanted from Pinch of Penny on Greer Street. Now it's live to the tub. And I would note that just because Christmas has passed doesn't mean you can't save on your dream hot tub today. You can, like the one I'm in now. Sit back and relax. You get the hot tub you've always wanted for the price that you've always thought of. I think it should be $7. We agree here at Pinch of Penny. All right. Over 12,000 square foot showroom with a gazillion. It's written in the copy. A gazillion hot tubs. It's amazing they can fit that many in. 12,000 square feet, but they do. And installations included with certain models. Pinch of Penny Pools and Spas, locally owned. Located on Greer Street off Capitol Circle Northeast. Go check them out and get you a hot tub. I want a hot tub. 
Maybe I'll go check them out. That'll be the New Year's. Maybe I'll get a hot tub. There you go. Hey, as you get older, things start to hurt more. Oh, you want to loosen them up. Always. No reason. No reason. Just walking around hurting all the time. I tell people about that all the time. I don't feel any different except for physically, like my knees hurt all the time. I played basketball for like an hour yesterday with my son and his buddy. And we're going back and forth playing. We were playing war. We had wars playing 21. It was great. Getting after it. Last night, about 10 o'clock, my knees are killing me. Both of them. Not even the one I had surgery on. Just both of them. I'm going to set the over under for the summer because you'll be doing a lot of activities with the boys in the summer. Probably those, uh, you know, eight to nine o'clock at night basketball games when the uh, sun's I still actually out. love those, man. I get the music cranking. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, play some basketball until it's uh, the wee hours. Yeah. I'd say by next winter, you're going to have the copper fit sleeves on the knees. I'm never going to do that because that's. Uh, <laughs> Focus science that they're stealing money from old people. It's a, well then, an, you yeah. get a knee brace. Then you're gonna have something to lock yourself <laughs> into place. Oh, you're, gonna, you're gonna do it. The compression I don't sleeve. want to do it. I don't want no compression sleeve. I'm gonna be at Orange Theory running up those hills. I so I was at Orange Theory last week before we went out of town. It was Thursday. This will make you laugh. So we're we're doing this. Basically, you progress through the run from base to push to all out at the end of the run, and then you go back to base, okay? And you control it. I'm not going to get into the details here, but you basically control how much uh, incrementally you're moving up on a one long run, right? So how much energy you have, you can gauge. You're like, oh, I'll bump it up 0.3 or 0.4, whatever, right? So I had a good week last week. Went four times, kicked ass there. Feeling good. And four times by Thursday. Thursday being the fourth. So that's every day. Basically. That's kicking ass. It is kicking ass. Kicking ass. I need to. I got I to get these 20 pounds off me, man. I'm too fat. Fat ass right now. And so I told myself, we got to get these pounds off the face. I got to get jowls pretty soon. I got to get it together. And uh, be back to the male model you guys are used to. So the thing is, uh, so I'm running. And I'm going, I'm going, I'm kicking ass, doing all this. And we're having a good, you know, I'm loving this workout. I'm feeling it, right? You get in the zone. You're really feeling it. And man, my calf goes, <laughs> it just locked up. My right calf was like, no, sir. We're running too fast. Holy Jesus. Exactly. What the f is that? Yeah. Yeah. So, but I was cooking. And this poor woman next to me, I scared the hell out of her because my calf locked up. I, I yelled out an F bomb. And I jumped and grabbed the two handles on the side of the treadmill because I had it going fast and you got to get off the treadmill. And I, I don't want to go. I'm not going to go flying face first oh, into anything. Man. That's excellent security footage. So I jump on the side handles and lift my feet off the treadmill and lock my calf up, put my foot back and put my other foot on the side rail. And <laughs> she, <laughs> she jumps because it's loud. And she's like, are you okay? I think she thought I was having a heart attack. No, I'm fine. Stupid calf just locked up on me. And uh, yeah, anyhow, so I had to sit there, work out that work out that calf cramp. Did a trainer come help you? Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, they were very alarmed. They bring the roller? No. Uh, they told me a stretch to do. And and I and I decided that's it. I gotta, I gotta, you know, so I I got off the treadmill. You didn't run on the treadmill with one leg? No. Hop begrudgingly, hop, hop. begrudgingly. And then I, yeah. I ended up, uh, I got after it on the row after that, but I was just, damn it, man. That's still not easy with a bum calf. No, very frustrating, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It, 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 it happens. But that's because get I a like. compression sleeve. Well, <laughs> don't want to get a compression sleeve. It's also because I really like coffee. And I probably should slow my roll on all the coffee. Because I think that's, that's the culprit there. And, it, you know, I imbibe on the weekends. Sometimes on weekdays. What but, if there was a coffee flavored Mio that you could drip into the that, water? Wouldn't that be great? Would you do that? Yeah, I really do love the taste of coffee. A lot, a lot of people drink it to wake up. I mean, I think it serves dual purposes, but I uh, I love the taste of coffee. Abnormally so. Like I love it. I like coffee flavored ice cream. I like coffee in general. Coffee, you could, I like when they put coffee grains on it, like your steak or something. I love it. Coffee's good. And I'm not going to stop drinking it. So I've got to figure something out. Maybe walk around with an IV. Don't mind me. I'm not dying. It's just like, I got to hydrate, guys. I mean, we're pushing past our base pace today. Today's push pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Today, today we're getting after it. Just the big yeah. metal apparatus. I can't be in the middle of a run over here just seizing up. 
It was awful. It was the kind of calf cramp that fires up your leg oh, where you're yeah. like, you can see it where that's you'd be the, grossed out watching it. You're like, oh, yep. That's the 3 30 a.m. cramp right there. You stretch your leg while you're having a bad dream and you were dehydrated when you went to bed. And you're like, oh, and that dream is no more. The reality is the darkness of your room and the pain you and feel. And you sitting straight up trying to grab your foot and pull it back. While, Come on, man. While also trying to not wake up. Oh, the yeah. Wife. It's, like, yeah. How can I do this? I'm in writhing pain, but I'm going to try and keep it quiet enough here. We've all done, we've all done the sit straight up in the middle of the night. Woo! You're like, hey, it's hard to go back to sleep. And then when you do go back to sleep, you wake up and you're sore. Remember that? You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, this is ridiculous. I don't know if this comes with age, but once in the last, this is very tough talk. Once in the last year, I woke up screaming. I've never had that happen before <laughs> because of what was going on in the dream. I could hear it. Like, you know, you want to yell, but you can't. And then eventually, like a mumble comes out, like, Whoa! like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Whoa! yeah. Just a desperate, <laughs> please. Yeah, the fear of God in my wife. She goes, What's wrong? It's a bad dream. It's a terrible. Made crap. it out to the surface. I'm sorry. I didn't think it would make it there. I shouldn't say this. The universe will have it come back around on me. I don't think I've had a bad dream in like over a year. Well, well I know, but I, you know. I'll, You're I'll, about I'll, to have a dream I'll of tempt it. what Sean McVay's life is like right oh, now. Oh, the difficulty, the yacht, the wife, the money. The success. And I just can't find a shirt tight enough. Sean McVay's nightmare. Dad, can you help? <laughs> Good work out of you, sir. Thanks to everybody who listened. We appreciate you very, very much. That is the truth. Enjoy the national championship game tonight. I will be back with you tomorrow with the boys. Some headlines. and Normal week this week, guys. Peace.